So good morning and welcome to the annual School of Public Affairs Fellowship Breakfast. Thank you all so much for coming early on a Friday morning. I'm Zoe Elizabeth and in a few weeks I will have a master's degree in urban planning. Um, from UCLA. Thank you. Um, I was lucky enough to be one of the Dukakis internship fellows this past summer. Um, where through that internship I worked for the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Agency and created um, two environmental tracking tools. One is uh, for their greenhouse gas emissions, which we did over the summer and enabled them to create their first greenhouse gas inventory, which they'll also be able to replicate now every year, which is very exciting. Um, and the second is to, I created um, a tool to track environmental performance across 12 different indicators of environmental sustainability. And um, that report is actually getting turned into the board, I think, in the next three hours. So <laughs> also very exciting. Um, so the purpose of this event is to celebrate our wonderful student fellows and their generous supporters. As you have seen in the program that's in front of you on the table, we have 65 student fellows this year, made possible by the wonderful support of those who are listed on the back page of the program. There's also some selected student profiles within that program to give you a feel of the kind of work that we do here at the School of Public Affairs. So I would like to introduce our Dean, Frank Gilliam. Dean Gilliam is a long-time member of the UCLA community. Not only is he a faculty member of both political science and public policy, Dean Gilliam served as the first ever Associate Vice Chancellor of Community Partnerships in the University of California system. And I know from um, conversations with Dean Gilliam that he's a strong commitment to bridging the gap between practitioners and academics, which is so important to the work that we do here in the School of Public Affairs. Um, so Dean Gilliam joined the School of Public Affairs um, as Dean in September of 2008, and is just about to close his first academic year. Um, I'm sure a lot of the students here can say that he's been with us just a year. We've already felt his um, positive impact and um, the great changes and movement forward he's bringing to the school. I was told Dean Gilliam doesn't like a long list of accomplishments, and so I won't go into that, but I will just say that um, in the first weeks that Dean Gilliam was here, a couple of us students were um, really curious to meet with him and had some concerns about how budget cuts were gonna affect our program, and he opened his um, doors right up to us. I think we were on his list before he had even fully moved into his office, and um, after a long conversation, we were all really struck with his strong commitment to our school and also a strong understanding of the important work that we do here in public affairs. So we're all very happy to have him. Please join me in welcoming him. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Zoe, for the pleasantly brief introduction. I want to extend uh, a warm welcome to all of you here uh, this morning. Thank you for coming out uh, early on a Friday morning. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a wonderful gathering for our friends and supporters and colleagues. Uh, this is my first time at the fellowship breakfast, and uh, I'm glad we have a, a full room of folks. And I also would like to extend a warm video welcome. Of course, we're now in the 21st century, and so we are videotaping this. Some of our supporters and friends who couldn't be here today, I think the camera's there, so I'm supposed to look at it and say thank you uh, and welcome. Um, and we'll be sharing some of these proceedings on the website. One of the things that attracted me to this school was the strength of the students. And this morning is really about the excellence in scholarship, application, and practice of, of our students. And as you will see as the program goes on, they are an impressive group in their work. It's impressive, I think, you're listening to Zoe, you, you understand the kind of uh, work that they're undertaking and the importance of the issues they address. So, this is a great celebration, and, and in the um, spirit of good news, because we've been delivering lots of bad news lately, I'm happy to share with you some good news uh, on our uh, graduate funding front. Uh, 
David Fisher is a member of the board, um, has made a generous commitment to renew uh, the fellowship, the David and Mariana Fisher Fellowship Program on Public Policy, Social Welfare, and Urban Planning. We're deeply thankful to the Fishers. This is a time when um, it's important for our friends to step up, and the Fishers have. We appreciate that. We'd like to thank our friend Michael Fleming, the Burnett Foundation, uh, their generous support, the Burnett Fellows, uh, continues to, the fellowship program continues really to be one of the anchors of the school and one of our signature programs. Um, and it is one of the hooks in our ability to attract students winter who are interested in public service. And it's been a real force in establishing one of the more successful programs we've had in the school. I'm also pleased to announce that Calvin Gross, Cal, where you go, uh, he's another longtime supporter of the school. He's recently completed his endowment gift for the Calvin and Maryland Gross Fellowship in Public Policy. And in case you don't know, Mr. Gross actually went to high school with Michael Dukakis. And uh, he, you, should, you should talk to him about that. He regales us with stories of, of the governor's uh, basketball prowess. Uh, which we all found. It, yeah, it comes into the must be one. A five foot eight guy. <laughs> but tough as nails, I hear. Uh, so, Kevin, thank you again for your generous support. And I, uh, in the vein of more good news, we're, we're still early pursuing in a very vigorous way uh, more support for graduate fellowships. Obviously, an important um, facet of what we do and allows us to be competitive. So we will continue to um, to push on this front. Uh, as Zoe mentioned, this is the end of my first year as dean, or close to it. I guess we're in the last throes of the last quarter. I I never quite know. I've this job has kind of had a Groundhog Day quality to it. All the days just keep. I don't know if it's the first week of the quarter, the last week of the quarter, I don't know if it's the break. Uh, uh, but I do understand that we're almost to the end of this academic year. Uh, so it's, 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 it's been interesting. This is my uh, third decade at UCLA. I guess I'm finishing my 22nd year. Um, and I was here when the school was started and taught in it in the very, very early days, I think in the first year, or first year in March, first year or two years. Uh, but have uh, been around the school for a long time. So from a faculty perspective, have a kind of working knowledge of the kind of uh, work that the students have been engaged in and the quality of the students we get. One of the things that you'll see today that I think is um, a hallmark of the students, uh, and particularly the fellowship students, is a great passion they bring to their work. And passion is important. We're supposed to be dispassionate observers. Uh, and I think uh, as analysts, that's a good quality. But I do also think having passion about the work, passion about the issues, passion about contributing to a more just society is important. Um, so this has been one of the real satisfying parts of the job is to uh, be involved with the graduate students and see the work that they're doing firsthand. Um, really impressive stuff. And I'm, out on the hustings being asked about our school, I always say one of the one of the great things about it is that we've had great students and continuing to find support for the students uh, is important for us to maintain uh, the level of excellence that we've all come to enjoy and expect. Today you'll hear some about the, some of the new developments in research and application by our students. They're pursuing graduate degrees in social welfare and planning public policies. Public policy, the, the issues that they're working on span uh, a range of topics and populations and indeed in one case cross international boundaries. Um, and each of the projects is really born out of the, the scholar's sort of passion, the scholar's real interest in turning a problem inside out and trying to find new ways to look at it and trying to find new ways to resolve some of the more pressing problems. So as Rachel, Kevin, and Jamila pursue their projects among disenfranchised women of the Middle East, and I just come back actually from the Middle East in Qatar, in Doha, and, and um, very, very, uh, 
the gender politics of the region are very, very, very interesting. Uh, and, and Qatar is, believe it or not, more one of the more progressive countries. And I, I wouldn't say it was a particularly um, robust place for uh, for women to participate in the society. So the work looking at trying to change that's important. Uh, people are working on the California justice system, another thing, people are working in South Los Angeles. We're proud to support this work. Uh, and, and what I really like is that people aren't just being instrumental. They're not just doing this work because they get a degree. I mean, the degree sort of in a way becomes incidental as they fulfill their passion and really, really, really seek to both build their toolbox and follow their passion. As long as you do that, you'll always be all right talking to some people at my table who are graduating and sort of thinking, well, I, you know, I've got to find a job now. Well, you're just on the start of the journey. Uh, it's not the end of the journey. And I think the passion that you bring uh, to your work and the skills and tools you've developed here at the school will serve all of you well. And I think in the end you'll, you'll find that um, you will be on the path to your career very shortly. So once again, welcome. I know you'll enjoy hearing the work. Anne tells me that they're actually going to give us food. Is that true, Anne? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm told that it may even be hot. Is that true? That we're going to have hot food. Uh, so um, I know you're going to enjoy hearing about the wonderful work uh, that our colleagues in the three departments are engaged in. So once again, welcome. Thanks for coming. For those who are graduating, um, congratulations. I'm actually excited about commencement. This is my first commencement. And I get to wear the robes and the funky hat, so I'm going to do this and lead the procession. I think I should get a staff and some other things that will help. But um, I do want to convince it. It's a long haul, so I appreciate all the hard work you've done. So who gets to come up next, Anne? That's it. Oh, you get to eat. Thanks. <laughs>